All right, so it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, our speaker today, David Blasquez Sanz from the National University of Colombia. And he will speak about Rivalient Solutions for Second Order LDE with Lower Polynomial Coefficients. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, and thank you to all the organizers for this opportunity to be uh, virtually here in the coaching seminar is uh, with great pleasure that uh, I am giving this lecture. Um, what we are going to do today is an exploration of the of a family of linear differential equations with uh, Logan polynomial coefficients. So what we are going to do is uh, an exploration. We are not going to do like new math. So we, we are not going to have like new theoretical results, but uh, we are going to give an exploration of how the integrable subfamily of these uh, families are. And this is a joint work with uh, our friend Primitivo Acosta Humanez, who is in Costa is in uh, Santo Domingo, in Republica Dominicana, and Henoc Venegas Gomez, who is a young uh, excellent mathematician from Barranquilla, Colombia. So this is the outline of the talk. Maybe let me see if I can get the spotlight. Okay, that works. Okay, so we are going to start with uh, the main technique for the exploration, which is the Coatsix algorithm. Then we are going to define the spectral set, which is going to be just the formal definition of the uh, integrable subfamily of this family of differential equation we are going to deal with. Then we have uh, some remarks about the auxiliary equations that we need to solve in order to find the Liouvillian solution of the original equation we are interested in. And then uh, we will see an iterative method to uh, characterize the auxiliary equations that admit the polynomial solutions, which is uh, the key step in one of the steps of Coatsix algorithm. And uh, with this, we are going to prove a result about the family of uh, integrable equations inside the family I will tell you which family, the family of second order differential equations, linear differential equations, uh, trace free. So there is no term in the first derivative where the coefficient is a Logan polynomial. So it's a polynomial in X and the inverse of X. So geometrically this corresponds to the case of a uh, uh, connection uh, I mean, rank two connection on the Riemann sphere with two singularities. So what we are going to do, in fact, is an exploration of, of this case. So it's easily generalizable to the case of two singularities on the Riemann sphere. So all this family, I mean, when L uh, moves into the set of all Logan polynomials, we can see this family as a pre-algebraic family. So it's a pre-algebraic variety, an infinite dimensional uh, algebraic variety, uh, which is coordinated by the coefficients of the polynomial. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we give uh, just a specific value for the coefficient, uh, then, uh, I mean, we can uh, compute algorithmically the Liouvillian solutions if they exist, or, or we can uh, give the, the Galois group if it is uh, SL2 in the case in which the equation is non-integrable. So we can ask uh, how the integrability and the Liouvillian solutions do depend on the coefficients of uh, the Logan polynomial L. So we want to give an algebraic description of the set of uh, integrable equation, the spectral set, and uh, their associated the spaces of uh, Liouvillian solutions. So let me explain just a little about how uh, we can characterize the different the cases of integrability, which is the different possibilities inside the Kovacic algorithm. So associated to the linear equation, we have the Riccati equation for the logarithmic derivative. Uh, sorry, this omega is one U. 
and uh, then according to the kind of uh, solutions that we can find for the Riccati equation, we can uh, characterize the different uh, integrability cases. So mainly we have uh, three cases. First is the triangular case in which uh, the Galois group is going to be conjugated to a subgroup of the triangular group, which is the Borel subgroup. And that this happens if and only if uh, there is a rational solution for the Riccati differential equation. And in this case, because we have a triangular uh, Galois group, uh, there is going to be an eigenvector for the Galois group. And this is going to be a Liouvillian solution, which is just the exponential of the uh, minus the integral of the algebraic solution of the of the rational solution of the Riccati equation. There is uh, another case in which uh, the Galois group is conjugated to a subgroup of the infinite dihedral group. I mean, that's the Sadisky closure of the union of all dihedral groups. This is a dihedral group uh, is uh, has two connected components uh, and the connected component of the identity is uh, C star. And in this case, there is going, we are going to find a pair of conjugated solution for the Riccati equation. And they are going to be in a quadratic extension of the uh, field of rational functions. And, uh, and then we will have uh, a pair, we'll have Liouvillian solutions or so, of course. The third case is the crystallographic case in which all solutions are algebraic and of degree bigger than two. And there is also the non-integrable case, which is, of course, the more, the, let's say, the generic case. OK, so in our family, I mean, because we are working with uh, Logan polynomials, we are never uh, find the Liouvillian solutions uh, in the case three because this case require more than two singularities on the Riemann sphere. The case two and one may happen. However, the case two, when it happens, it is reducible to case one by a suitable change of the independent variable. That's because we know where the ramification of the algebraic solution uh, are going to be. I mean, the ramification divisor must be at zero and infinity. So that means that the, the, the conjugated algebraic solutions are necessarily algebraic. Uh, uh, the conjugated algebraic solutions are in fact uh, rational in the square root of x. Then we can just uh, cons transform the equation in the equation for a square root of x, which is not trace free, but we can normalize it. And then we will fall in an equation that has a Liouvillian solution of the first kind. I mean, that falls into the first case. That means that the integrability analysis of the uh, second order linear equation with a Logan polynomial coefficient reduces to check if it falls in case one or after the normalization and the change of variable, it falls in case one. So let's see how the uh, search for a Liouvillian solution, the eigenvector of the uh, Galois group works in the case uh, one when the Galois group is uh, triangular disabled. So the answer is as follow. We, the, the thing is that we have some control of what we can find here in the exponential part. So we are going to look for a solution which is uh, of this form uh, when uh, with p-ammonic polynomial. And then just rewriting the Riccati equation, we'll find that there is just a, a finite number of candidates for, for this omega that appears here. And we will have just in, in the case of a Lorentz polynomial coefficient, we will find just four different candidates for omega. And these uh, candidates are determined by the behavior of uh, the Lorentz polynomial at, at its poles. So we fix the different candidates and then we have a, an auxiliary equation. And whenever we, we find a polynomial solution for this auxiliary equation of a certain degree, which is in fact determined by omega, then we obtain a Liouvillian solution of this form for the uh, original equation. So let us consider 
this family. And uh, we will just see into the uh, finite dimension projections. So we fix the degrees. I mean, the order of the, of the Logan polynomial at zero and the degree. And also we can fix the polynomial to be monic. So we, we have a monic Logan polynomial of fixed order and degree. So that the family of uh, differential equations with uh, fixed order and degree is going to be C star time uh, uh, Cartesian power of C, just coordinated by the coefficients of the polynomials. This is start with, uh, comes because L minus R uh, is assumed to be different from zero. And then uh, we define the spectral set to be the subfamily, um, the subset of this uh, family M of equations that admit uh, Liouvillian solutions. Of course, the spectral set uh, has a canonical decomposition because the Galois group needs to be triangularizable or conjugated to a subgroup of the dihedral group. So we have the subfamily in which uh, the Galois group is triangularizable, which corresponds to case one of uh, Kovacic algorithm, and uh, the subfamily of uh, equations with Galois group conjugated to a subgroup of a dihedral group, which uh, correspond to case two, but also to some a specific case in case one in which we have a diagonalizable group, which is also so, which is both triangularizable and the subgroup of the dihedral. So in the intersection, we have equations with a diagonalizable group. So then there are some conditions on the orders of the, of the poles that allow or not to apply case one or two of the algorithm. So in terms of the spectral sets, we can say, for instance, if the order of the pole at zero is one or an even number bigger or equal than four, and the degree of the polynomial part is even, then uh, the spectral set uh, correspond only to triangularizable cases. In the case of, uh, order a uh, pole of order two and uh, odd degree, then we only have uh, equations in which uh, the Galo group is uh, dihedral or subgroup of dihedral. In the case uh, of R2 and M even, so order two and degree even, then we can find both cases. And in any other case, there are no integrable cases. So then the spectral set, set is going to be void. So one thing interesting is, for instance, the case of uh, the, the dihedral case only appears when the order of the pole is a two. So first, uh, how we deal with the dihedral case? But what we do is just uh, make a change of variables. So we obtain uh, another equation for uh, a new uh, independent variable, which is going to be the square root of x. And then uh, this differential equation is not in trace-free form. So we want to just to get right of this term. So we reduce it by D'Alembert uh, transform. Uh, we obtain the, a new equation that must fall into case one. And uh, so then we have that uh, my uh, Logan polynomial was in the dihedral family if and only if this uh, transformated polynomial, which is of a different uh, degree, uh, belongs to the triangularizable family. So note that this D'Alembert transform and normalization is in fact a polynomial mapping the coefficients of the Logan polynomial. That means that if the if the uh, triangular family here or some part of the triangular family here is, um, let's say an algebraic variety, then the pullback, which is also to be an algebraic variety here, is going to be a part of the uh, dihedral family here. So in particular, if we have that the uh, uh, spectral set here is a union of uh, algebraic varieties, we just consider the pullback and we will have a union of algebraic varieties here. 
So then uh, we need just to focus on how to compute the triangularizable family. Okay, so for this, uh, uh, there are different cases um, because of time constraint, I'm going to focus just in the case in which the order at uh, zero, the order of the pole at zero is uh, an even number bigger than two. I'm sorry, that should be bigger than bigger than one Q. So this is bigger, bigger than two. If not, some con considerations are not going to work. And the degree of the polynomial part is even. So what we have is to isolate the square roots of the Logan uh, development of the, the Logan polynomial at zero and infinity. And it corresponds just to rewrite the uh, Logan polynomial in this fashion where a is the um, quadratic part, which is going to be a polynomial monic of degree P and R is the quadratic part of the uh, pole, which is going to be a rational a, a Logan polynomial with only negative part. And then we have a, a kind of double quadratic residuum here. And the thing is that if we just can change L by the triple RPA. So here we have the family of triples RPA. We have just a two covering map from uh, this space, which is just uh, uh, an affine space into my family and just uh, changing. And uh, this is a covering map because there are always two choices for R. We have to, 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 to uh, choose one, uh, square root in order to start to develop air. But the thing is, this is uh, in fact, just an algebraic map. This is going to be polynomial in coordinates. So then the, the theorem is that when we have a, a one equation in this case, we can characterize by using the Kovacic algorithm if uh, my equation has a Liouvillian solution and it, it's going to happen if and only if for some of the four possible choices of two signs that I call here S0 and S infinity, just following the notation. I think because it's used, used that notation. Anyway, uh, by some choices of those signs, first I have this, this number and the interesting thing is that this number is uh, uh, a regular function is uh, is polynomial and is rational here, but this number is always different from zero, so it's going to be a regular function defined on my family. It's a positive uh, integer number, non-negative uh, uh, integer number, and then from the the composition, we can have the different uh, choices for the exponential part. So we can have uh, four different choices for omega in my ansatz. And then with uh, these choices for my omega, I have uh, four different auxiliary equations. And the nice thing also is that all the terms appearing in the auxiliary equation uh, can be described algebraically from the coefficients of my original Logan polynomial. And the, if there is a polynomial solution of degree D for this equation, then I will obtain a Liouvillian solution. And this is if and only if, so I have like four shots for finding a Liouvillian solution. If uh, I find just one by this term, uh, the group is going to be triangularizable. And if I find uh, two, it's going to be also diagonalizable. So, so the thing is, that I can just decompose. So I'm going to work in the set of triples, A, R, and B. And then I have four regular functions. And then the, the spectral set is just included in the, in the union 
of the prey image of the positive uh, integer numbers. So I can just take the part of the spectral set that uh, falls into a fixed uh, positive uh, number by one of these projections. And this is what I'm going to define as uh, this set. S tilde n plus minus plus minus correspond to the equations that are integrable and the polynomial part that I'm going to obtain in the quasic algorithm is of dimension, uh, is of degree n, the polynomial of degree n. This will be a sub-index here. So. so then what I have is that uh, the spectral set, but in this two covering is a, the part with degree n, of course, is uh, the union of the part of degree n corresponding to the four different shots. And then I define the part of degree n, just the projection by the covering of this part. So if this is algebraic, this is algebraic. So, so we have this decomposition. So the total spectral set is just the union of all these things in the covering and in the original family, which is the union of all these things. And we are going to compute in five minutes the algebraic equation of all these uh, subsets. So we are going to see that this spectral set is an enumerable union of uh, algebraic uh, varieties. And also that those algebraic varieties do not accumulate. That comes from the uh, degree D, the four choices of the degree D uh, being uh, regular functions. Okay, so in order to compute the equations, we have a uh, we have been using a method uh, called the asymptotic iteration method, which is a problem, uh, which is a method to characterize differential equations having a polynomial solution. So this is mainly a linear algebra problem. You just put the polynomials into differential equation and, the, and then the differential equation turns out to uh, produce a linear equation for the coefficients of the polynomial. But, uh, it's a different problem for each degree D. So involving the vanishing of different matrices. So we want to do it in a way that works, uh, let us say for any D. <laughs> and for this, we use this uh, asymptotic iteration method that was developed by Steve T. Hall and Sad. Uh, asymptotic iteration method, I, I think it's in mostly uh, simplification of differential resultants. What we do is we start with a second order linear differential equation where alpha and beta are just un undetermined elements and variables. And uh, we assume that they vary in some read algebra. So then we may differentiate the equation obtaining a third order equation. And we can just iterate in this process obtaining equations of arbitrary order and what we obtain is that uh, if we plot this equation just in terms of the higher derivative and the first uh, derivative and the original function, we are going to have always here two coefficients that are going to be differential polynomials in alpha and beta. So these sequences of differential polynomials uh, can be computed recursively by this equation of uh, safety and sat and hall. And uh, we can see this recursion as an iteration of a linear differential operator in the space of matrices with coefficients in the a ring of differential polynomials with var differential variables alpha and beta. <clears throat> we just iterate this uh, operator. And then we can define the universal obstruction polynomial just to be the determinant. I'm sorry, uh, there is uh, some determinant missing here. So it's the determinant of this matrix. So the determinant of this matrix is a differential polynomial in alpha and beta uh, with the uh, integer coefficients, in fact. And then the, the, the result, which is, um, quite straightforward is that the necessary and sufficient condition 
I mean, I can just con take any differential field uh, of a characteristic zero with algebraic closed field of uh, constants. And I can just take any second order differential equation. And of course, my differential field has to be an extension of the field of rational functions on the constant to give some sense to this uh, result. And then the necessary and sufficient condition for this equation to have a non-zero polynomial solution of degree at most n is that uh, this uh, universal differential polynomial, the, the one which is in the position n, vanish on f and g. So the proof uh, is quite straightforward. You know, see if we have a, sol a polynomial solution, uh, then we have to, this equation uh, is just a solution in the space of a rational function of x so inside of k, and then we have this zero. And in the other case, mostly we just need to use that if we have a polynomial solution, maybe if all solutions are polynomials, this is easy. But if, uh, if uh, we only have uh, a polynomial solution, then we can find you no know, one uh, uh, h in k because uh, we have a polynomial of degree n. So then by derivating, we can find this equation. And the, the general solution of this equation is going to be an n, n plus two vector space. And then just by taking in consideration the dimension of the space of polynomials, we will have that they have a non-empty intersection. So these differential polynomials are nice and they characterize differential equation having polynomial solutions, but they are huge. No, delta zero is very nice, delta one is nice, but the very soon they just explode. So I cannot write down uh, delta four, but they are very easy to compute anyway. And then if we apply this construction to the auxiliary equation that we explored, we have the following. So we have that uh, a triple RDA, and this corresponds to the Logon polynomial R squared times B times A squared is going to be in the integrable family with a sol alluvillian solution with the polynomial part of degree exactly N, if and only if uh, we have two conditions. First, there is a choice of the signs is infinity, uh, the two signs, uh, this is uh, S zero, I'm sorry. So just, uh, just uh, the, you remember we had uh, four regular functions uh, corresponding to the four choices of the sign. So we need that one, that this uh, takes a positive uh, value, integer positive uh, value N. And then with the corresponding choice of omega, I mean, the corresponding to the same choice of the signs, we have that uh, this pair of uh, log n polynomials, because the, those are going to be log n polynomials, are differential zero of the, uh, sorry, this will be an n of the n sim uh, universal differential polynomial abstraction. And because this is, those guys are log n polynomials, the vanishing of this result, which is also going to be a log n polynomial, finally, uh, the host coefficients are regular functions in the coefficients of B and omega. And uh, omega depends on A on R. So that means that the, the equations that we are obtaining are just uh, algebraic equations in the coefficients of E, B, and A. So some final remarks, and I think we just go into the break. Case yeah. one and two are similar. I mean, we trade them with similar arguments but because the analysis of the possible solutions for the Riccati equation is, is slightly different. Uh, 
we have to we have different choices of signs and so on but at the end everything goes to uh, the auxiliary equation and the algebraic dependency of all the coefficients intervening in the coefficients of the uh, auxiliary equation so that our result implies that given any algebraic family of a rank to connection on the Riemann sphere with two singularities the subfamily of picard Bessio integrable connection is a enumerable union of algebraic varieties. And also each compact uh, subset will intersect just a finite number of this uh, algebraic variety. And uh, I will say that the, in order to find many strata, I mean, these uh, algebraic varieties that form the spectral set, or uh, in some particular family with few parameters, it is, in fact, uh, much more useful to apply the asymptotic iteration method directly to the family and not to make use of the universal differential polynomials directly, but uh, mostly in the right, not directly. And I think that's uh, all for this part of the talk. Thank you. So let us thank uh, David for his nice talk. So at this point, do we have any questions? So, okay, so if we have no question at this moment, let's go to the breakout rooms. And then when we come back, we'll uh, ask David more questions, but let us thank David again. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, welcome back everybody. So um, let me start off by asking if anyone has uh, any question they would like to ask David at this point. So, so maybe one comment is that maybe that we can clarify that uh, we are not using parametric picard bessel theory, we are using the classical uh, differential Galois theory. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think, you know, uh, Primitivo is here. Hola, Primitivo. <laughs> so we can have also some feedback from, from him. It, it, here is, uh, Primitivo is this. Primitivo Acosta Humanes, one of the co-authors. And of course, this is a very classical differential Calabas theory. Uh, how this kind of results could be related to parametric Galois theory, I have not much idea. But of course, uh, because in the, you know, the, in the parametric Galois theory, probably you are just going to be uh, something which happens out of the spectral set to you take just the general family. But then if you take something inside the spectral set, maybe you find something interesting. So I have a question. So you, you talked about the case where R and M are even uh, and are bigger than two. So how about the other cases? Is it the similar approach or um, is it very different? Yeah, so they are quite similar. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a few differences, and the difference have to do uh, with the this ansatz. Mm -hmm. So the point is uh, <clears throat> you have to construct uh, one omega such that this part of the equation uh, I mean, this part of the solution, the exponential part of the solution mm -hmm. compensates, let us say, some uh, the behavior of the poles of your, of your Logan polynomial. And uh, then when R is equal one uh, and um, or two, the way in which you compute the residuum of omega is different. But at the end, you will also obtain, we will have in the case R equal one, just one, two choices. And the case R 
equal to you will have also again four choices and you will have also some omega which is a, a logan polynomial whose coefficients depend polynomially on the original coefficients of the Lorentz polynomial L. And then you will just uh, plug it into the auxiliary equation and uh, it will follow very similar considerations. So this uh, main result will look very much the same, but the definition of omega is going to be a little different maybe here there are only one choice instead of two choices and the definitions of d and the lambda are going to be different but qualitatively it happens the same so then uh, you just plug then uh, these uh, coefficients here and they are into the uh, universal differential polynomials big delta sub n to obtain the different components of the spectral set. And, and just to clarify, I wanted to ask about that. The, the theorem you show here, is that the work uh, you've done with your co-authors or is um, is that taken from uh, Kovacic Ah, no, this is, uh, this is ours, you know, yeah. from Kovacic algorithm. Th there are many interesting works about mm -hmm how to apply Kovacic algorithm for families of equations. Mm -hmm. I have seen the uh, Claude Michi here and the Michael has a beautiful paper in which he explored theoretically, not this family, but the much bigger family of uh, just a general uh, equation with uh, rational coefficients. Mm -hmm. He put polynomial with a, with a polynomial coefficient also in the higher order term. And, um, and uh, so the point with the Kovacic al algorithm is that some parts of the Kovacic algorithm are quite sensitive to the change in the in the in the coefficients. Mm -hmm. So then we just try to do an exploration of what happens in the more general case for two singularities. But th there are many examples coming. I mean. It, there are many examples uh, coming from, from parametric study using the Kovacic algorithm. And uh, when they find this kind of uh, spectral set, so usually when we have just one or two parameters, usually this, uh, uh, this spectral, this, stra this strata, finally, is usually they are just finite set. So you just have the spectrum like the zeros of some polynomials. So you have uh, one parameter and then one polynomial characterizing when you have Julian solutions of uh, of one kind and another polynomial. So you will find a sequence of polynomials mm -hmm. that uh, you may call, in some cases coming from quantum mechanics, they are spectral polynomials. So we, we take the, this work the spectrum <laughs> for the issues from from these applications. Okay, okay so um, are there any any other questions? Yeah, suppose, uh, this is William Sid, sorry, let me just put it on. Um, so so with the, the, the expression, the y equals x to lambda px and the e to the integral, um, could you just, yeah, no, it's just on the previous slide, on the slide that you are showing. Oh, sorry. You were just on the, on the same slide. Ah. Before asymptotic iteration method. No, it was the slide you were showing. At the yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, William. No, that's all right. This was uh, here. Right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so if you take this form of a solution and you look at the differential equation is satisfied, independent of what lambda or p or omega is, what kind of equations would you get? Would you get back the, uh, all the, I mean, would it always be in the form of your 
uh, starting equation? You know, uh, you think a Laurent polynomial L or something like that? Uh, okay, so if we do backward and then we just set this family of, so we let omega to be any Laurent polynomial, P any right. polynomial and lambda any complex number right? and just go, go backward. Yeah. It looks like, but maybe not for any values of lambda, because you know uh, we constructed uh, the exponent lambda by using some of the coefficients appearing in the in the a and r Lorentz polynomials. Yeah, and they also form part of omega. Yes. So I think maybe if we put some kind of algebraic constraint, like probably lambda need to be some kind of algebraic function of the coefficients of omega in order to obtain as the, let's say that the, the minimum differential polynomial of this function to be a differential linear differential second order equation with a Logan polynomial coefficient. So I think not for any choices of lambda, p, and omega. So, so maybe put the other question is under what condition would this be? Would this, would the minimal differential polynomial be? Um, well, I think it would always be linear, but when would it be of second order? Yeah, I don't. Maybe it is of second order, always, but not. Uh, but the, but the the differential equation is not going to be. Uh, with a Logan polynomial coefficient. Ah, what kind of I think, but, but you know, but anyway, these questions I think are uh, in the scope of the problem. So, so pro I think everything, they are things we may compute. So, I mean, it seems to be maybe a little bit easier if you start with a solution, which is the guaranteed new William. Um, to, to find out what class of equation you have to satisfy. Yeah, I think so. And, and then you will have, yes, like the family of Liouvillians, so, some algebraic families of solutions, and then you will just uh, put them algebraically into the, into the, the family of equations. And yeah, to your spectrum or something. I think you will obtain the dual description. I mean, in, in, instead of implicit equations for for this spectral strata of the spectral set, you yeah. will obtain parametrizations. But I think some, before doing that, you have to find some kind of uh, algebraic relations between the lambda and the, the coefficients omega. Mm. Well, I suppose that's the question actually, right? Yeah, so I, do, I don't know, yeah, and, and I don't know what these algebraic relations, uh, how they look like. We should need to do some computations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So any, any other questions? All right, so if we don't have questions, let us thank David again uh, for his great talk and um, for uh, answering our questions. And uh, le let me thank you. And thank you all for your attention. And, uh, you know, for when I was a graduate student, uh, the coaching seminar was always like a reference to me. And this is the first time I speak officially in the seminar. So it's a great honor to me to be here with you. Honor to have you. All right, so we'll see each, uh, all of you uh, next week uh, uh, for the seminar. Okay, have a nice week. Thank you. Good to see you all.